So in this video, we're going to be talking about finding the nature of a turning point. In other words, is the turning point like this, which is called a maximum, or is the turning point like this, which is called a minimum? Uh, now, generally when teachers teach this, they usually teach it using an equation that you're uh, fairly familiar with, uh, 3x squared plus 2. But if I show that to you, you're going to know straight away, oh, well, that's a parabola, it's a smiley face, so the turning point is a minimum. So I'm going to show you an equation you've never seen before, which means that you'll have to find the nature of the turning points because you've got no idea what it looks like. So this is the question. Find the turning points and their nature of f of x equals 1 on x plus x plus 2 cubed. Um, so what I've done is combine two functions that you're familiar with, a hyperbola, uh, that's the one like this with the asymptotes, and a cubic, uh, which goes something like that. And I've combined them together and they make a really cool graph. Regardless, we need to find the turning points and we need to know whether they are maximums or minimums. Uh, so the first step here is to find the derivative of that. And you already know how to do that. So you can pause the video now and do it or you can just wait and see what happens. Alright, so I've worked on that. Uh, I moved x to the top and made it x to the negative 1. Found the derivative here. And then I did a little mini chain rule here to find the derivative of that. So f of x is that, f dash of x is that. Now to find turning points, um, remember that the derivative is the derivative function. So to find a turning point, you let the derivative function equal 0. All right. So that's what we get, 0 equals that equation. Now that is far beyond our uh, ability to solve algebraically. So we can just solve using the graphics calculator. So put it into the equation solver. If you don't know how to do that, you need to come and see me. So the answers that I'll get for x. So now I have four answers, and those four answers represent the x value of the turning points of this. So this thing's going to have four turning points. I'm just going to do a rough mud map sketch so I can see that. A Cartesian plane and an axis of the turning point of negative 2.2, negative 1.6, negative 0.34, and positive 0.25. So maybe it goes like this. Maybe it goes up here, down here, up here, down here. Or maybe it's all the way up here somewhere, and it starts by moving upwards, turning, 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 turning. I don't really know, but I just know that there's a turning point occurring on each of those x-axis. So, now I need to sub each of those points into my original equation for x to find out what the y-coordinates of each of those turning points uh, would be. So, find y-coordinate of uh, turning points. Let x in f of x equal... Um, each point. Or, so in this particular case, it's going to be 0 0.2559. And then I'm going to do it for that one, and then I'm going to do it for that one, and then I'm going to do it for that one. So I've put in my first value, 0 0.2559, which is uh, this line here, and I'm going to find out what that turning point is. So it's 15.3882. So like, I don't know, somewhere up here. Uh, so the turning point is 0 0.2559. Five. I've gone, I've gone off the screen. The turning point is zero point two five, comma fifteen point three eight eight two. I'm just going to start making a list of my turning points. I'm going to say turning points. One of them is that zero point two five, uh, fifteen point three eight eight two. Now I'm going to sub in my second value, my third value, and my fourth value into all of this f of x. And I should end up with four different turning points. I have a list of four turning points. I've just switched to rounding to two decimal places because I was getting a bit bored there. Uh, here's my four turning points. Now I can plot them on here. I've got 0 0.25, 0, 15.39. I've got negative 0 0.35, 1.6. So uh, 1.6 would be like here-ish. I've got negative 1.65, negative 0 0.56. So I'm below the x-axis there. And I've also got negative 2.26, negative 0 0.46. So I'm below the x-axis there and a little bit above the previous one. 
Unfortunately, I still don't know um, what these turning points are doing. Now, some of you are probably saying, yeah, I do know. It, it does this. It goes up. That's a turning point because that one's above that one. So it must turn there. And then it must turn there. And then it must turn... Wait. Okay. So, how is that happening? How am I getting a turning point here? A, turn, a turning point here, definitely. A turning point there. Then a turning point here, which tells me that I should be going down in that direction. But, I'm going to get another turning point there. So, something is amiss in this equation, something we haven't really seen before. Regardless, we can still find the nature of each of these four turning points. Uh, let's start with that one and find out what the nature of that turning point is. So the way to do this is as follows. I know that when x equals 0. Point, uh, I think it was 0. 0.2599, whatever it was. Um, so we'll say 0. 0.26. I know that the gradient at that point is a turning point. So the gradient is 0. And I know that that's a flat line. What I'm going to do now is test a number just a little bit left of that. And you only really want to go a little bit left. So a little bit left of 0. 0.26 would be like 0. 0.2. Two. And we're going to find out what the gradient is at that point. And we're also going to test a point a little bit to the right of 0 0.26, something like 0 0.3. Alright, so if I sub 0 0.2 into f dash x, uh, I should get a number. Alright, I've done it. I've subbed in 0 0.2 in... Um, into f dash x, and I get a negative ne number, negative 10.48. Now, if you've got a negative number for your gradient, negative 10.48, that means the line at that point is going downhill. Okay, downhill. So, I think that this is going to be a turning point with a line here, a line here, and then a line here doesn't have to be that way. It could be an inflection point where it goes down that way and that way. So we still have to test 0 0.3 by putting 0 0.3 here and 0 0.3 here and finding out what that value is. All right, so I've put in 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 into that equation, and I get an answer of 4.76. 4.76. That's a positive gradient, and if that's a positive gradient, it's going to look like that. So as suspected, this point, 0 0.2515.3882, is a turning point that goes like that. Okay, I don't really know what happens with this turning point, because if that's a turning point and that's my next turning point, it doesn't matter whether it's like that or like that, I don't really know how they're going to join up. Um, hmm. Uh, I'll test that one really, really quickly. I'm going to do all of my working in there in five seconds. So the number that I'm testing this time is negative 0 0.35. I'm going to test a little bit to the left of that, which is negative 0 0.4. And I'm going to test a little bit to the right of that, which is negative 0 0.2. And I'm going to find out what's happening here and here by subbing those into my derivative function. All right, I subbed them into my derivative function, and I got a positive number, which means that the gradient is positive, going upwards. Uh, I've got a flat line here, and the negative number here, so this turning point's going to look like this. So now, bit of a problem. I've got a quadratic here like this, and I've got a, a turning point at that point that's going that way like that. Okay, so weird, because that's a turning point, that's a turning point. There's not another turning point between them. So how can that be a what's called a local maximum, and how can that be a local minimum? Well, the answer is that this equation has a, an asymptote in it. It has a discontinuity in it. So this gets closer and closer and closer to something. This gets closer and closer and closer to something, and there's just nothing in the middle. Uh, there are two more turning points. I could work you through it, but I can tell you that that turning point is going to look like that, and that turning point is going to look like uh, oh, sorry, where's that other turning point? Oh, one's above the other, yeah. And that turning point's going to look like that. And so we get a... Starting from here, it comes up, uh, up, and then down, and then up, and then it leads towards that discontinuity, never touches it, and then from the discontinuity, 
we have it moving back up again. I'll show you a picture. Okay, it's important that when you are finding turning points, you know how to find the nature of those turning points by using a table that looks very much like that.